Now, now, Fifth, when you continuously call Puff gay, does that affect no. your relationships in Hollywood? I don't go. No, I don't call. I don't call him gay. I said. Let me read it. Let me read okay, it, read. Fifth. Oh my God. Sorry, I can no longer That's help confused. you guys. Soon you will all be gay and happy. You are all now left under leadership of Puffy Daddy. Report to the nearest rainbow. Dinner thieves. In theaters, January. Oh, that's <laughs> why I get tired. I'm sorry. Get tired. Yo, that's yeah, that's drama. <laughs> the feds raided homes in Los Angeles and Miami that belong to rap mogul Sean P. Diddy Combs. And tonight we hear those raids are linked to possible sex trafficking. Diddy's whole world is falling apart like a house of cards. Homeland Security didn't just hit up one of his mansions, but both LA and Miami. Boom, raided. And get this. They're dropping accusations of him running a full-on sex trafficking gig. And guess who spilled the beans first? His ex, Cassie. She straight up dragged him to court for all the messed up stuff he put her through. And he caved real quick like he knew he was busted. But wait, it gets even uglier. Another chick suing him, saying he pulled some shady crap when she was just a kid. And then there's his ex-producer Lil Rod, popping up and accusing Diddy of running a whole trafficking ring, even involving minors. And on top of that, there are allegations flying around about illegal guns, drugs, and hidden cameras in his pad. Rumors are that Diddy was running some kind of Epstein-type deal where he was filming everybody, right? That's the rumors, yeah. I don't know that there's any proof or anything other than that. Man, it's like he's living a Jeffrey Epstein nightmare. And check this out. When Homeland Security came knocking, Diddy straight up ditched his mansion, leaving his kids behind. Can you believe it? Homeland Security ain't playing, man. They come in guns blazing. He could have put his kids in real danger. People say he bolted to some private island, but turns out he was just pacing outside Miami airport. Dude was probably trying to pull a runner, but he got snagged. He like, he like tried to, he took one of my sh heels and tried to throw it at me. And then he like, like mushed my face and like really hard and made my nose bleed. Wow. And the only person that ever, Every time me and he, like, we get into, like, fights like that, the only person that ever helped me was um, D-Rock. Everyone else just kind of just allowed it to happen and just, like, looked the other way. Well, I do. I think he's very capable of doing it. It's in his character. That's who he is. That's what comes with power. That's what comes with arrogance. That's that's what comes with, you know, what makes him, you know, um, power. That's just the selfishness to make you be like that you know but with everything that's going on man you're looking at um they dropping them left and right all right let's dive into cassie and diddy's roller coaster romance spill all the juicy deets back in august 2006 cassie kicked off her music career with diddy's bad boy records he wasn't just her producer he even hopped on a remix of her banger me and you with young jock by 2007 Gossip was flying about Diddy and Cassie being more than just business buddies, especially when Cassie became the face of Diddy's fashion label, Sean John. But it wasn't until 2012 that they made it official, and where else but at Kanye West's Paris Fashion Week show and Diddy's own event during Paris Fashion Week. Talk about making a splashy entrance. Things got interesting in 2014 when Diddy hinted at popping the question on Instagram with a massive diamond ring, but he swiftly took it down leaving us all wondering if Cassie gave the green light. Trouble brewed in paradise in December 2015, putting a little strain on their relationship. In 2018, Diddy's ex, model Gina Hewen, spilled the tea, claiming she was in the mix with Diddy while he was still with Cassie. Then came the messy drama in August 2016 in LA, with TMZ dishing out the dirt about a heated showdown. Diddy apparently snatched Cassie's phone, and things got so intense that police reports were filed. In 2017, Diddy's talking about wanting more kids on The Breakfast Club, but by 2018, it was Splitsville for him and Cassie. We all caught wind of the breakup in October. Then, out of the blue, Cassie drops a bomb in December 2018 with an Instagram post cozying up with her personal trainer, Alex Fine. But hold up, there's a plot twist. Cassie and Alex hit us with a bombshell in September 2019, announcing they're not only expecting but also tying the knot. Little Frankie Fine enters the world on December 6, 2019. And just when you think that's it, boom, Sonny Fine arrives on March 22, 2021. But here's where things get wild. Cassie recently throws us a curveball, filing legal action against Diddy. And we're not talking minor stuff. Serious accusations are on the table, like serious violation, 
physical abuse, and some serious control issues during their time together. Talk about a messed up relationship. R&B singer Cassie has accused hip hop mogul Sean Diddy Combs of rape and a decade of physical abuse. The two were romantically involved for years, but in a lawsuit made public today, Cassie says there was a pattern of control, drug use, and forced sexual encounters. All right, so here's the scoop on the crazy Diddy and Cassie drama. They had a major turnaround when they quickly patched things up right after Cassie hit him with some heavy allegations, like continuous abuse that goes to staggering distances and even trafficking. They dropped a joint statement on Friday, keeping the settlement terms under wraps. Cassie mentioned she's handling things her own way, and Diddy, aka Mr. Love, sent some positive vibes with a touch of warmth. The legal roller coaster kicked off on November 16th when Cassie slapped Diddy with a lawsuit, airing out about a decade of alleged abuse and violence during their time together. He straight up denied everything, calling it Cassie's way of trying to squeeze cash out of him. As they talked about settling, Cassie's lawyer gave her props for speaking out. The lawsuit painted a grim picture, accusing Diddy of raping and assaulting Cassie when she was just 19 and he was 37. It also spilled about Diddy allegedly pushing substances that messed with Cassie's life. Diddy's lawyer made it clear that settling didn't mean they were admitting to anything. They were sticking to their denial story. Before they sorted things out, Cassie's legal team fired back, saying Diddy tried to throw a ton of cash at her to shut her up, but Cassie wasn't having it. She wanted to speak up for women going through similar stuff, not just take the money and bounce. Before it all got squared away, Diddy's lawyer spilled that Cassie was demanding a crazy $30 million and throwing around threats of spilling the beans in a tell-all book. He straight up called it blackmail and brushed off the whole lawsuit as a bunch of lies. So, here's the lowdown on the lawsuit. Diddy was basically calling the shots in Cassie's life, from her finances to even snooping around in her medical records. Cassie spilled that an MRI showed she was losing her memory, blaming Diddy's roughness and the pills he pushed on her, especially tons of painkillers. He was like her personal drug dealer. Back in 2016, Cassie tried to cut ties with Diddy, and things got so crazy that the cops had to step in. But get this, she didn't press charges because she was genuinely scared of Diddy's unpredictable side. After their intense fights, he tried to smooth things over with fancy gifts but the bruises told a different story, and he ended up hiding her away in hotels for recovery. What you want my, what? What you gotta say now? What you gotta say now? You ain't got shit to say. When you put your girl on the snap, baby, yo babe. I mean, shit getting weird. Come on, baby, it's hot outside. You fucking wrapped up in that blanket. Let's go jog on the beach. The lawsuit spills the beans on Diddy's alleged repeated physical abuse against Cassie, painting a pretty grim picture. It even draws parallels to Ike and Tina Turner. And it doesn't stop there. Other exes, like Kim Porter, allegedly faced the same mistreatment. Even his former bodyguard, Gene Deal, is backing up the claims. Rumor has it that Diddy messed with Kim Porter's head, making it hard for her to move on with other guys. And that controlling vibe was there in his relationship with his baby mama, Misa Hilton. I didn't know Cassie, but I knew somebody who was going through the same thing she was going through, and that was Kim Porter. So people ask me, yo, and they send me clips of Cassie, I guess it's an affidavit to the courts, you know, of what she experienced. It was the same thing Kim was going through. But wait, there's more craziness. Back in 2012, when Cassie and Diddy decided to take a break, she hooked up with Kid Cootie. Diddy supposedly lost it and threatened to trash Kid Cootie's ride. And guess what? The car went up in flames in Kid Cootie's driveway. Coincidence? I don't think so. And whenever Diddy got wind of Cassie talking to another guy, he went berserk, putting both the guy and Cassie through physical harm. This dude's behavior is just out there. Some folks are even calling him downright evil, it seems Diddy's trying to do damage control with his Love Combs rebrand, looking all loving while hiding this dark, controlling side. Cassie's been through the ringer with this guy and is spilling all the crazy details. But hold on tight, because the Diddy and Cassie saga just hit a whole new level of messed up. 
There's this video making the rounds showing Cassie in a super distressed state, trying to get away from Diddy. This video is setting off major alarms, and people are calling for a deep dive into what's really going on. It's not just about physical fights anymore. Diddy's being accused of using Cassie in some seriously messed up ways, even getting her involved with other male escorts. He apparently got a sick kick out of watching her with other dudes. The situation got even worse with Cassie doing explicit stuff, labeled as freak-offs, for cash. And get this, Diddy supposedly recorded it all, and not for any good reason. He used the footage to keep Cassie in line, threatening to spill the beans if she tried to take legal action. Getting out of this crazy situation was no walk in the park for Cassie. Diddy, described as a violent force, used his connections to cut her off from friends and family, putting the fear of danger into her. In 2018, he's even accused of barging into her apartment and forcing her into non-consensual acts. Even after Cassie escaped, Diddy's behavior stayed nuts, with him trying to keep tabs on her every move. This whole story shines a spotlight on the dark side of the entertainment world, claiming that Diddy's been dodging consequences for way too long. Thanks to the ongoing investigation that we've been introduced with recently, we now know that Cassie was not the only victim. This could be a much bigger deal than we thought, leading folks to question its significance and the need for everyone to be in the loop. There are also calls to look into Kim Porter's death, fueled by suspicions of secrets she might have wanted to spill before she passed. Worries extend to others like Young Miami, with some thinking Diddy might be involved in some shady stuff behind the scenes. Reports of compromising situations and explicit acts raise some serious ethical questions about how far people go for success. The big message here is about the messed up consequences of compromising your principles, emphasizing how important it is to keep your integrity in the face of industry pressures. Diddy's alleged role in all this is screaming for a serious examination of his actions and the impact they've had on everyone involved. It's a wild, dark ride, and folks are demanding answers. Man, Diddy's world is flipping upside down. The feds showed up not just at one, but two of his spots, one in LA and another in Miami. They're saying it's all tied to some serious sex trafficking investigation. The government likely has a very strong case against Diddy. They don't execute these types of search warrants until they have talked to witnesses, have gathered evidence, and they believe they have an ironclad case. Helicopters buzzing, agents swarming. It was a whole spectacle outside Diddy's LA pad. And get this, they even nabbed his sons, Justin and King, outside the crib in Holmby Hills. And they didn't stop there, hitting up his Miami spot too. Diddy was in Florida when it all went down, and word is, they snagged his phones before he could jet off to the Caribbean. According to a source, there have already been interviews with folks related to the alleged sex trafficking, domestic violence, and racketeering. And they're saying there are more of these interviews lined up. Homeland Security Investigations put out a statement saying they're on it, working with local law enforcement to get to the bottom of things. But Diddy's been pretty tight-lipped about it all. Cassie's lawyer, Douglas Wigdor, didn't hold back though. He's all about backing law enforcement and getting justice served up to Mr. Combs. And attorney Tyrone Blackburn, who's representing a couple of accusers, he's saying it's about time Diddy faces the music. But here's the kicker. It's still not clear if this raid has anything to do with the allegations from those lawsuits filed against Diddy in the past few months. One thing's for sure though, Diddy's got a lot on his plate right now. And it's not just these recent lawsuits. Cassie dropped a bombshell complaint back in November, accusing Diddy of some heinous stuff like brutal beatings and sex trafficking, and she wasn't the only one. Two more women came forward Thanksgiving week with similar horror stories. Diddy's been denying everything, but the heat's been getting to him. He stepped down from his Revolt TV gig, and a bunch of companies cut ties with him. Looks like he's in for a rough ride ahead. Now we all know that 50 Cent likes to troll people. It's what he does. And boy, has 50 Cent been having a fiesta with Diddy ever since he wanted to take him out shopping. But let's get real for a sec. 
50 has been riding Diddy's case ever since Cassie dropped that lawsuit bomb. He's been standing firm and airing out all the shady and messed up stuff Diddy's been involved in throughout his career. Even back in 2010, 50 Cent spilled some tea on Shade 45, questioning Diddy's connections with Cassie. According to 50, he had some steamy pics of Cassie sent to his phone from who knows where. These pics were way hotter than what was floating around, so 50 hit up Diddy to ask about his thing with Cassie. Diddy admitted to their romance, and 50, feeling uneasy about it all, showed him the pics. Diddy said thanks, but it left 50 wondering where those explicit shots really came from. In his story, 50 kinda hints that someone close to Diddy might have been behind it. He's not holding back, throwing some shade at Sean Combs and making it clear he wasn't doing any favors by sharing those pics. Now 50 and Diddy have been butting heads for ages, so this latest revelation just adds more fuel to the fire. And with 50 dropping hints that there's more dirt to spill, it's like watching a train wreck in slow motion, waiting to see how it all unfolds. In the rap game, the tension between 50 and Diddy is legendary. 50's always got something to say about Diddy. He was sounding off on Instagram, predicting more drama to come, and boy was he right. He straight up called out Diddy, saying he paid up too late, and now, it's open season. 50's counting down, expecting more women to step forward with their stories about Diddy. And people are eating it up, digging into Diddy's past and side-eyeing his crew. And if that's not enough, there's chatter about 50 Cent hinting at Diddy's involvement in Tupac's death. You know 50's not shying away from it, stirring the pot and waiting for the backlash. It's like a never-ending soap opera in the world of hip-hop, with beef, accusations, and shady secrets around every corner. And with Homeland Security raiding Diddy's home, you can bet that 50 Cent trolled Diddy even harder. If you ask Fifth, this is it for Diddy. It's curtains for him now. On his Twitter, 50 Cent wrote, Now it's not Diddy do it, it's Diddy done. They don't come like that unless they got a case. As we wrap up this deep dive into all the craziness surrounding Diddy, one thing's for sure, this story ain't finished yet. With all the bombshells, accusations, and insider info flying around, it's like we're watching a never-ending soap opera starring the hip-hop mogul himself. From Cassie's legal showdown to the old warnings from 50 Cent, it's like peeling back layers on a giant onion. The stuff going on behind the scenes in Diddy's world is a real eye-opener. It's not just about the music, it's a tangled web of relationships, power plays, and the fallout that hits artists once they step into the bad boy arena. As this whole saga plays out, it's not just about Diddy or Bad Boy anymore. It's shining a light on the darker side of the music biz, the power struggles, the shady deals, and the toll it takes on folks trying to make it big. It's a wake-up call for the whole industry, reminding everyone that success often comes with a hefty price tag. So, as we step back from the chaos, we're keeping our eyes peeled for what comes next. The quest for truth and fairness ain't over yet, and the music world's in for some serious shakeups. Diddy's legacy is on the line, and this story's far from wrapping up. Buckle up, folks. We're in for a wild ride. In his latest move to throw shade at the troubled bad boy boss, he posted a pic on Instagram blending Diddy's face with that of the infamous Jeffrey Epstein, the convicted ex-offender. Boozy said where the F is his friends, they not saying nothing because they didn't know he was recording everything. LOL, wait till I get the tapes. 50 wrote in the caption, referring to Boozy's recent question about why no one who attended Puff's alleged freak-offs is sticking up for him. Now, Jeffrey Epstein was a big-shot financier who got busted in 2008 for sex trafficking minors. Rumor has it, he threw some wild parties on his island that had celebs and politicians rubbing elbows. He got arrested again for the same stuff in 2019 and ended up offing himself in jail before facing trial. Since last Monday, Diddy's been all over the news, cause the Department of Homeland Security raided his cribs in Miami and LA as part of an alleged sex trafficking investigation. So far, no charges against Puff, but his old foe Shuge Knight thinks Diddy's in hot water. I tell you what, Puffy, Shuge said in a prison call shared online, your life is in danger cause you know the secrets of who was involved in that secret room you guys were participating in. So you know they gon' get you if they can. I tell you what, Puffy, your life is in danger. Because you know the secrets. Who's involved in that little secret room you guys participate in? So, you know they're going to get you if they can. I turn myself in. I'm 
time you gotta face the music. That's most of the time. Oh yeah, by the way, do not do your time going by Brother Love. Brother Love is not a good code name for prison. It's like a never ending drama, ain't it? 50 stirring the pot, Diddy's dealing with a whole mess, and Suga's throwing out warnings from behind bars. Man, hip hop's wild these days. So Daphne Joy's dropping some heavy accusations against her ex, 50 Cent, saying he physically and sexually assaulted her. In a recent Instagram post, she didn't hold back, directly calling out 50 Cent, or Curtis James Jackson as she put it, at the top of the post. They've got a 12-year-old son together, sire. She went straight for the jugular, accusing 50 of raping and abusing her. She made it clear she's done with him and that karma's coming his way. 50's denied the claims, but Joy's not backing down. This drama's flaring up as 50's pushing for sole custody of Sire. His rep says it's because of some wild accusations in a lawsuit against Diddy, claiming Joy was involved in some sketchy stuff. Joy's firing back, posting all kinds of things on Instagram. She's not holding back, saying Sire needs a real dad figure, not someone who's MIA most of the time. And it's not just about their personal beef. Joy's also calling out 50 for making light of rape and sex trafficking allegations against Diddy. She's saying it's not a joke when people's safety's on the line. She's spilling all the tea about 50's relationship with Sire, saying he hardly showed up when they lived just a mile away. She's done pretending he's some kind of dad hero when he hasn't earned it. And let's not forget, back in 2013, 50 got in trouble for domestic violence against Joy. He ended up pleading guilty to a lesser charge, but it's clear there's been tension between them for a while. So 50 Cent just couldn't resist taking another jab at his ex, Daphne Joy, this time while hanging out at a Nicki Minaj show. During Nicki's performance at Madison Square Garden Saturday night, 50 hopped on stage and decided to shout out his love for sex workers, obviously throwing some shade at his baby mama. He dropped the phrase real quick on the mic and the crowd definitely caught it and seemed to get a kick out of it too. No doubt 50 was throwing shade straight at the Diddy drama with his comment last night. After sharing footage from his special moment at MSG, he went on to say Nicki's no P Diddy, and he didn't stop there. He hit up Instagram to share his sex workers comment from Saturday, doubling down on his sentiment in the caption. Drama never seems to end with these two, huh? Gag City vibes, no P Diddy. Yo, I'm not gonna front Nicki got all the Bs. I looked in the crowd and was like, damn baby, what you doing? then threw my jacket at these little sex workers.